structure of lungs themselves. How the lungs look like. Lungs are in pair. One right and one left. These are present inside the chest cavity. These are supported and protected by a rib cage. Because lungs are spongy. They are delicate. They are and the heart, you know, that uh, between the lungs, heart exists. Um, so rib cage actually protects these two vital organs, heart and lungs. Lungs are also protected by another structure called pleural cavity. Lungs are present inside a membranous structure. We call this membranous structure pleural cavity. The, uh, the membrane which is covering this um, pleural cavity are called pleura. Uh, the area between the lung and the pleural cavity is filled with a fluid so that when lungs expand and contract, uh, the, uh, during inhalation and exhalation, um, resistance uh, should not be there. So this pleural cavity actually helps the lungs to reduce resistance while expanding and um, uh, collapsing again. Below lungs, because lungs are present in the chest cavity, below the lungs, um, a muscular floor of uh, the chest is present. This muscular floor is called diaphragm. Let's look at a diagram. You can see on the left side of the diagram that lungs um, are uh, present on uh, both sides of the chest cavity and uh, there is a surrounding uh, membrane around them, pinkish in color. This membrane is the, um, this membrane actually makes the pleural cavity. Down there you can see uh, a muscular part will just below the lungs. This is the diaphragm and uh, there is another more close look at the um, alveoli uh, present inside the lungs. Uh, one alveolus, um, if you look at the diagram B, one alveolus is uh, one um, air sac with its mo most of the alveoli is shown from the surface and the other one is shown as a cross section which is showing by arrows um, direction of movement of air through these alveoli. In the diagram C, you can see the, surf the two respiratory surfaces through which the exchange of gases actually occur. You can see a blood vessel, a capillary um, with the two RBCs moving through it and the surface of the alveolus. You can see that these are too close. These are very close to each other. and uh, Simply by diffusion, the takes place of materials, uh, the, the materials, um, the gases, oxygen and carbon dioxide, they are exchanged because these surfaces are too close to each other um, that the exchange uh, could take place simply by diffusion. Have another look on the lungs, the diagram. This is both cross sections. Now, breathing for inhalation of air and exhalation of getting air inside the body and removing air from the body. This process is called breathing. So breathing is inhalation and exhalation activity of the lung, of the, of the uh, human being. Lungs are spongy in nature and uh, these cannot pull or push air inside or outside, which means that lungs on themselves cannot pull air in or cannot push air out. These needs, these lungs needs help. There are two structures which help them. Now we recall that lungs are surrounded by the ribs and on the lower side, on the posterior side of the body, lungs have a, 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 a diaphragm, a floor of the chest. These two structures actually help uh, the lungs in inhalation and exhalation. Look at the diagram, which explains the process of inhalation and exhalation. In the first part, you can see breathing in and breathing out. During breathing in, the muscles of the ribs contract. When the muscles of the ribs contract, then the chest cavity, the, which, ha which have ribs, moves outwards and upwards. That is, it is expanded. At the same time, the 
muscles of the diaphragm you know diaphragm is a muscular structure diaphragm contract when it contracts it is become less dome shaped that is it actually goes down move towards posterior side the result is that pressure in the chest cavity because it is expanded um is reduced and when this pressure is reduced then the pressure on the lungs is also reduced the result is that lungs are expanded when they are expanded air is pulled in that is from nasal cavity to trachea to bronchi and to lungs we call this process inhalation saans lena that is ke hawa ko andar lekar jana so these two processes actually help the inhalation after that when air is filled uh, in the lungs exchange occur then the process of exhalation exhalation saans ko bahar nikalna what happen in exhalation the muscles of the ribs relax when muscles of the ribs relax then as you can see in the second diagram when the muscles of the ribs relax then the um chest cavity the ribs actually the rib cage moves downwards then the diaphragm muscles they also relax at the same time the muscles of the diaphragm they also relax when they relax they moves the position of the diaphragm moves towards or changes towards anterior side the diaphragm become more dome like the result is increase in pressure inside the chest cavity when the pressure increases the result is increase in the uh, increase in pressure upon the lungs because lungs are present in the chest cavity and lungs um then uh, goes back to their um, previous position the result is exhalation of air air uh, goes out from the lungs towards bronchi to trachea and out we call this process exhalation so inhalation and exhalation are actually helped by um, the intercostal muscles of the rib ribs and then the muscles uh, the muscular diaphragm we call overall this process as we call overall process as breathing or ventilation when the air enters inside the lungs then uh, the gas exchange should take place and the alveoli are the actual surface for gas exchange gas is are exchanged against a partial pressure that is the difference in partial pressure uh, results in the exchange of gases by diffusion the blood is distributed um, around alveoli in very thin layers blood cells in alveolar air they are in very close contact for exchange of gases as we know that red blood cells have hemoglobin inside and hemoglobin have a capacity to bind with oxygen to make an oxyhemoglobin oxygen diffuses into the um, uh, blood capillaries and then makes a uh, oxyhemoglobin then carbon dioxide this is exchanged in the form of this oxyhemoglobin then tissues have to uh, release their carbon dioxide inside the blood which is the product of their metabolism carbon dioxide is a more dissolved uh, more easily uh, carbon dioxide is a gas which is more easily dissolvable uh, so this is present in the um, uh, in the tissue fluids from here it enters into the blood capillaries um, this is transported in blood as about 20% as uh, carboxyhemoglobin because hemoglobin have a capacity to absorb the carbon dioxide 5% by some plasma proteins that is 5% is bound to some plasma proteins and about 70% um as bicarbonate ion combined with the sodium so there is a reaction that takes place a carbon dioxide uh, plus water there is an enzyme called carbonic anhydrase which help in production of bicarbonate ions and uh, the bicarbonate molecule and bicarbonate molecule uh, is really readily um converted into its ionic forms hydrogen and bicarbonate look at as a, look at a diagram this diagram shows a very close picture of an alveolus with blood capillaries 
as you can see in the diagram first of all an alveolus is shown then um, second uh, the second part the b part an alveolus is shown in a cross section you can see that many capillaries are surrounding one if we count them these are uh, five five capillaries are surrounding one alveolus um, and every capillary from every capillary one blood cell is passing if we enlarge it even a more we can see that the blood cells are in a very close contact with the respiratory surface the surface of the alveolus so diffusion of oxygen and diffusion of carbon dioxide takes place simply against the gradient 